Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with Reggie. What's up, dude? What's up, man? What's up? Brother, you are looking pretty red there, man. Dude, I know. It's funny because it's nice out in Seattle. It's summer. It is, it is hot out here, though, man. I'm trying no to take joke. some walks, yeah. and uh, yeah, I need to start wearing some sunscreen. I got sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> But as usual, guys, we are bringing the solid pickups for you guys. Got a lot of cool stuff here. Um, very excited to get it started, man. Jason, how are you feeling? Dude, yeah, I haven't seen what he brought. You haven't seen what I brought. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, you have graciously uh, kind of hooked me up with some gifts. <laughs> and uh, in this video, at the end of it, I'm going to hook you up with a gift. I think you're going to dig it. Oh, right on, man. Let's get this started. I want to see. Take a look. man i'm gonna start off first okay so um got some cool stuff here so first game here um a lot of you guys don't notice i used to have a pretty solid sega saturn collection back in the day and i sold it off like in the early years and you know thanks to my buddy kyle i decided to kind of like build it back up hmm. and uh here's one of the heavy hitters i've got for it recently uh twinkle star sprites okay this is a verse shoot 'em up and this is one of the first games i told you about when we first met i, I remember game, yeah. that i because yeah. I, I remember going Wait, what's the name of this game? <laughs> it sounds so weird, right? But, yeah. you know, that's a Japanese shooter for you, right? Yeah, and it, it was cool about the Saturn version. They added voice acting to it, hmm. uh, you know, kind of like drive the story along. I, I know a lot of shoot 'em up fans don't like, don't care about story, but, you know, it, it's there. And um, Sometimes I like it, too. You yeah. know, it, it can be fun, right? Yeah, as yeah, long as it doesn't take too much time. Exactly, not know. too complicated, yeah. you know, and stuff. So, uh, Verse Shoot'em Up game, uh, that was the one of the first ones I've ever played. And it's oh, Versus, awesome. where there's like two... There's two screens, you're yeah. going against another person, and basically, uh, whatever they shoot on their screen could come onto your screen and make That's it harder right. for you, so, you know, yeah. it goes back and forth, so you want to take care of, uh, like, all the stuff on your screen as, as much as possible and win, but it's very entertaining. The game is so much fun. And it was one of the games I really liked on the Saturn before I got rid of it. So I got it back back in the collection again. Not getting rid of it this time. Um, feeling pretty good. So yeah, you're playing Saturn now. All right, I'm playing Saturn again, man. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Well, I picked up a game that you t told me about pretty much the moment that it came out. Ah. <laughs> the Quarry on the PlayStation Five. Yes. Did you beat it? Not yet. So okay. Rebecca and I have been playing this pretty much every night. It's not a super long game, but we play it like about you know an hour or two every night. You know. So uh, are you guys playing co-op like where you're assigned characters? I didn't realize that we could do that until yeah. later. The thing is, Rebecca really just kind of wants to watch most of the time. Okay. Although I do pass the controller to every once in a while. The thing is, she gets scared easily or freaked out. Or, oh, you yeah. Know. And uh, the, this is by the same people who have made, like, uh, The Man of Medean. The, yeah, the, uh, Until Dawn. The, um, they're, they're, they're called Super Massive Games, I think they're called. Yeah, something like that. And um, this is kind of like it was supposed to be a spiritual successor to Until Dawn. Okay, it feels and, um, like it. It, it. Yeah, it does feel like it, man. The game is creepy. You know, usually when I play these type of games myself, I usually get the best ending. Okay. When I beat this game, I didn't get the best ending. I, they, 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 they tricked me on some parts. Yeah, so. there's a couple of <laughs> times, too, where... Uh, also, too, I'm... I'm tempted when I play these kind of games because it'll give you a lot of choice. Mm. And so it's almost like a choose your own adventure game. And sometimes I'm like, I want to choose the, the option that I don't know what will happen mm. just because it seems like it'd be more fun yeah. to mess with people or characters or whatever. Right, right. And so I've done that a couple times. And I'm like, ooh, she died. <laughs> <laughs> <This> Horribly. Game, <laughs> dude, this game, you, you will, if you make the wrong decision at a certain point, you yeah. will get torn apart in yeah. this game. It's, 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 it, yeah, it's, it's pretty brutal. It it's cool. The, the only th the only thing I would say about it, and you've probably heard this, is that the that there are some technical issues with like the motion capture a little bit in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Did you run into that where sometimes a person's eye is kind of looking off in some direction? And you're just like that doesn't look quite right. You know, only when I, I look, I, I push the pause button when they because that okay. some massive games they like showing the character's face all yeah. close up. Yeah. I hate yeah. that, <laughs> but they, when you the, when you push the pause button, it shows that. That's so and true. And I notice it on there, but yeah. it's usually under your control because you're, if you're touching. One, they'll look yeah. whatever direction, but yeah, it's, it's I mean, there. It's a super impressive game. I mean, they've been making these for a while. The motion capture is second to none. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like uh, often when I play these games, I'm like, wow, how did they do this? Like, it was this because it's it's a pretty big level, or they're going through a house, or they're in this case, they're going through a like a, a summer camp, and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, did they shoot all this like on a motion capture stage? It's pretty impressive, yeah. so uh, yeah, we're we're 
I think we only have two two chapters left, so we're okay. at a really good part. Wait, wait, two chapters. So chapter. Oh wow, I, you're on the, some of the best parts. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Okay, where, cool. Yeah, and I know it's hard. I even have to be careful showing the footage in this because it's such a story driven game. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like I was looking at the back, going, "Did they even describe what the monster is?" And they technically didn't on mm -hmm. the box, so I can't even really tell you about the mon <laughs> monster or any of that yeah. stuff. But it's very creative, and I'm enjoying it a the lot. The monster so. is definitely something you don't want to run into. And for sure, so and I will say is that. It, they handle it in a way that was surprising because because it, it's it's a I, I can't even spoil it just other than <laughs> they're, 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 they're the, yeah. creative in the way that they reveal and and deal with the monsters mm -hmm. is all I have to say it's not your typical way of doing that right uh, that's so vague but <laughs> check it out <laughs> good on them yeah uh, and next up I have here something a bit different um, hmm this I got these from Bitmap Books and and basically what this is this is a um, a guide to RPGs. Like pretty <laughs> this thing much, is huge. I know, right? Dude, seriously. And this other one here, Go Straight. Pages, this is the ultimate guide to side scrolling beat em ups. And uh, this is pretty much every game, you know, pretty much exists. Wow. Huh. Yeah, it's, it's like really impressive. And I, I picked these up because, you know, I, I like learning the history of certain yeah. games, uh, games I didn't know about. And there's a lot of like translations in here. Uh, just a lot of like, like like behind the scenes type stuff, and you know if you're looking like to get into beat 'em up games or RPGs, these books are definitely up your alley. I mean, I was impressed with what I saw here, hmm. and just like they have these, like these certain spreads on certain games. Like here's one right here, Ninja Kids. This is one beat 'em up I played back in the day. A lot of people don't know about this game, but it's got its own section in here, and it tells you about the game. It's just very impressive. And it's, Next it's, to Mug Smashers, which I've never heard. Mug of Smasher. That's that's a hilarious name, and yeah, that guy's pants look hella funny. Yeah, I know. He looks like he'd be like. In a hair metal band back in the day, right? Like the lead singer of uh, Van Halen. <laughs> well, he's got a hell of a jump kick, so yeah, that's yeah. pretty awesome. And just like David Lee Roth in Van Halen. <laughs> Maybe it is him. I don't know. <laughs> but you know, it's just it's just really nice to have something like this out there. Yeah. You know, you could like go over and like just learn the history of certain games because I there's a lot of stuff. I thought yeah. I knew a lot of stuff, but man, when I looked at this book, I believe it. So impressive. Well, you know, it's funny because while we do have access to this stuff on the web, sometimes it's nice having a book that's concise, mm -hmm. also physical. To be honest, it's like I'll yeah. pay more attention to a book when mm -hmm. I open it up and that's why yeah some of these guides that come out and stuff like that it's like I, I like these this thing is massive I know right <laughs> there are a lot of Japanese RPGs out there <laughs> yeah man so hmm. the company Bitmap Books man they got a lot of like books like this out there so uh, definitely check them out there I'm Legit. impressed <laughs> all right next up for me speaking of Japanese RPGs I was not planning this but it was next on my list live alive ah okay. yes so this this is a pretty cool release. I, I didn't I didn't know about this game until recently, but basically it was a Super Famicom game that was released by Square back in the day that we did not get. Right. And um, this is a kind of brand new it's version a, it's, of it. Yeah, it, it, it's a one of those RPGs. Cause I played it briefly back in the day because somebody did a fan translation of it. I heard that. And yeah. you go back between different uh, like times in this game yeah. and, and yeah. play with certain people. Like uh, there's a Western part. There's a part where it's in the future. Yeah, there's a there's a I, I'm in the, I'm right now I'm in the uh, Imperial China era I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so there's I believe there's there's either seven or nine scenarios in this game and they're all throughout time throughout mm -hmm. characters, even different styles of games. Yes. So so for instance the reason why I started in Imperial China is because that's the one that kind of teaches you a lot of the basics of combat. Mm -hmm. But then I guess there's like stealth ones in there there's story driven ones <laughs> it just I guess it mixes it up a lot. Right so. and the exciting part is that all these stories will intertwine yeah possibly later in the game you know I'm not going to spoil it but it's like it's it's something else and it's 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 a, it's a blessing that we got this game yeah. finally released over here because it's an amazing game and I'm I'm shocked that it didn't get released before. Yeah. So it's cool. It looks great. It's using the... Uh, what was that game that came out a couple years ago? Um, it's, a, it's an RPG that came out on... Secret of Mana? No, 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 no. It's it's another one that was kind of like that, that forced perspective. Uh, but yeah, I just picked this up. What's cool about it is that it is fully voice acted as well. So it mm -hmm. has all English voices on here. Uh, it seems pretty cool. So it's in my Switch right now. And I'm playing it as we speak. Right on, man. Yeah. Okay, um, next game here, a little surprise for people, I've kind of gotten to uh, collecting some more PS1 games I've never heard of, and here is Radical Bikers. So, Radical Bikers, you ever play that game called Smash and Drive? 
I don't know. Smash and Drive is kind of like like a crazy taxi game, but it's like a race that so you're trying to get to the destination. It's all kind of crazy driving. It's oh, obstacles you get over. Okay, it's pretty I, hilarious. I, I think I've heard of that. So this is from the makers of that game, and pretty much you play as a pizza delivery person trying to get to your destination, <laughs> deliver of delivery. But you're going against another. Uh, person, uh, a pizza delivery person, and you're going through all this crazy traffic, uh, all these crazy stunts. The game was actually really a lot of fun, and it was actually an arcade game that was released in uh, in, in Europe, and um, the only physical release it got was for the PS1, so I, I found this game by accident, so hmm. this is a kind of funny story. Uh, I was watching this video on Facebook where this, this got pizza delivery guy almost hit somebody on a bike, and they got into this big fight, and it was it was hilarious. So I went to type it on YouTube, and this game popped up instead. Oh, I was like, oh wow! I never <laughs> heard of this game. So picked it up immediately. Game is a lot of fun, guys. Uh, definitely check this one out. You know, okay. I, I mean, like I, I like arcadey type games, so this was oh yeah, my alley. totally. So it's something you could get into easy, get out of easy. You know. Yeah, yeah, totally. And pal, interesting. So that's cool. Yep. So what are you playing that? Is that are you playing on your PS3 test system or? I can play it on there right now since those that system's not hooked up. I was playing it on my on my PSP. I had an emulator oh. on there and I played it like that. Okay, so, cool. You know, but yeah, man. It's, okay. I think you'd like this one. All right, next up, I got my copy of Quake on Switch from Limited Run. I purchased this a while ago. I just wanted to have a physical version of Quake 1. You know, it's such an iconic, classic first-person shooter. It plays extremely well on the Switch. It's cool, too, because it also gives you the option of motion controls. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of... You, you can do it. You can you can basically you know fine-tune your shots. So it's almost kind of like having a, a mouse, almost, but... Uh, and it's just classic Quake, which is super fun to play even today. You know, we've all played this game. You, you still get sucked back into it because it's just yeah. It, it's constant, probably like you know? you know, it's probably very nostalgic because you can go, you can yeah. play it online and everything like that. So maybe I never really do. So oh, okay, <laughs> it would. Uh, I don't know. I, I assume maybe if it says it, it will. Yeah, so. four plays online. Oh, okay. So. That's cool, but for me, it's all about the first play or the, the first person, you know, uh, campaign for it. The only thing I would say is that after playing this, I definitely want Quake Two released in physical because that Quake Two is my jam. Really? Oh yeah, I loved Quake Two. So uh, I, I assume they're probably working on it. Uh, hopefully, yeah, physical. this one did well, and they made it like a, a release. I'm pretty sure they'll yeah. get part two out. Hang yeah, on, so that man. is cool. I know. Cool, I haven't cool. bought Quake in a while. <laughs> Okay, next up is something a little bit different, but hmm. this is the Resident Evil PS1 collection. Whoa! By Project Games Retro, uh, they sent me this little prototype they made of it. So this and is something new. Yeah, this is uh, basically uh, something they put together. They put all the all the Resident Evil games together, even including Resident Evil 1.5, which was the original Resident Evil 2, and put it in its own little collector's pack. And uh, they sent that to me. Very impressive. But um, yeah, they they've started putting these out and. It's, it's just really cool, especially being able to play Resident Evil 1.5. Resident Evil 1.5 was canceled like years ago, and I could now I see why it was canceled because the game was kind of like that's my opinion was kind of boring. Hmm. So it was good that they, they they remade it, but it is in here for people who want to play it. Definitely something I, I, people should take a look at. Wow, okay. Well, that's cool. All right, next up for me are three games I picked up in Milwaukee at the Midwest Gaming Classic Expo. There you go. Okay. There we go. So these were all put out. They're basically uh, premium edition games that they put out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had a booth there, and so I snagged all three of these. These are their latest releases for the Switch. So that one right there, Phenotopia, is like a retro classic style uh, adventure game. Okay, cool. Uh, it, it, you do fishing and stuff like that. Cathedral is a really cool NES style platforming game. Okay. Yeah. And then that one right there, Mighty Fight Federation, that is a modern 3D brawler, like arena oh, brawler. This, this, I heard this is kind of like the Power Stone game. Yes, it's yeah, very okay. much like Power Stone. Yes. Right on, okay. Yeah, so you have all different kind of characters and stuff like that, and you, you just got thrown into an arena and basically battle out. But um, yeah, I mean, the reason why I want to kind of highlight these because I think a lot of people when they think of physical game releases, you know, obviously limited run comes to mind, maybe super rare, stuff like that. But, you know, premium edition, man, it's like they're putting them out too. It's like yeah. really cool. Like they all have their kind of niche. And uh, I like these because it's like has a hard case and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, they put a lot of detail in this. It's they great. do, they do. And so, yeah, it, again, it's just kind of wild. It's like I was thinking about this and is that this generation. You know, when you talk about physical games and being backed up and sort of mm -hmm. these physical indie games, it's like the Switch is, it seems like it's number one and PS4. Like right. so many of these games, that these indie titles 
are going to be backed up and archived on the Switch and PS4, yep. don't you think? I, I, I know it, man. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, anyways, three games that came out from Premium Edition Games here. So, I was pretty pumped to get these. Right on, man. Yeah, so check them out. Okay. All right, so next up here uh, is a beat em up game, and this is called Mayhem Brawlers. Hmm. Um, this, this game plays almost exactly like Streets of Rage 4, which is was totally fine with me. It was perfect. Uh, it actually plays like it's like kind of like a prototype of Streets of Rage 4. But anyway, the game is awesome on its own. Uh, what I really like about it the most is that you can actually choose what path you want to go to on the next level. So the, the game is not so linear. You know, you can always mm -hmm. choose your path, which is always impressive. And it has this comic book like storyline. Like it has like these comic book clips that, you know, help kind of keep the story going yeah, and everything. Yeah. So definitely something cool. I think a lot of people would, would want to check out. I found out about about by chance, my buddy Kyle hooked it up, and I was like, "Man, like seriously, that's that game's on point, man." So, and it's a European release, is that yes, what yes, it's far. Okay. It's right now it's a European release, hmm. so uh, it's on available on the Switch as well. Yeah, but I was pretty impressed with it. Uh, the only thing I would say that I don't like about it, and you know, a lot of games have kind of like kind of set, started to set the bar for this. That these type of games need to have an online mode. Okay. Where you can play with people online, you know, so you can get that co-op experience because that's a part of the experience. You know, playing like this game, like single player, is, is cool, but you want someone to play it with because it's a lot of fun when there's a lot of chaos on the screen. So. Interesting. Well, that's going to take me to one that I was going to talk about later, but I was gonna, I'll talk about it now. All right. Have you played Strange Brigade? Yes, Strange Brigade. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> This this originally I guess came out like on the PlayStation Four like about four or five years ago something like yes, that. Yes, me right? and my friends, uh, Mini Glitch, we actually played this. Uh, Did you? Years ago and beat the game. Did over, you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well that's so cool. So I just I just picked this up. It just came out on the Switch fairly recently, and then there's a physical version here. And uh, dude, I. Rebecca and I lost several hours playing this game really? like, right off the bat. Oh yeah, it's so much fun. So Strange Brigade is is a shooting co-op game up to four players at least on the Switch. Yeah, it's like set I mean, the years like it's set in like the early 1930s, 1930s yeah. and everything, and it's like a, a like a whole bunch of like these heroes that are they're coming together to try to find treasures and stuff and, and shoots a lot of zombies. Yeah. you know, and, and you have giant like uh, scorpions and stuff. And the narrator is so hilarious. He's like hilarious. He, yeah. he doesn't like cats. You know. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason <laughs> he'll tell you often that he doesn't like cats but uh yeah it, i know the humor in this game is it's by rebellion which also made the uh, the sniper elite series mm -hmm. so they they're very good at third or i guess third person shooting but uh yeah I, this was a total surprise for me i i really enjoyed this game and it looks pretty good on the switch i would say it's it's probably nowhere. You probably got a much better experience for the visuals on the PS4. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it was. I, I think I did. But uh, the game, to, when I played it recently, it mm -hmm. was it did kick us out of a couple of matches and it had like at least little errors. Oh, that I did ran it? Into, but uh, I don't think it, maybe that was just my yeah. connection. I don't know. Maybe that, that was it. But again, it's cool. It's got a physical version on the Switch. Yeah. So I was Lay pretty on the happy. To, yeah, it's pretty happy to get that. Next game here, very nostalgic. I picked up Panzer oh. Dragoon PS4. So. Man, I hadn't played this game in years, and I remember playing it on the Saturn. Was I remember how slow it was, but I still enjoyed it. And playing it on the PS4 because they remade it from the ground yeah. up, I was yeah. like, man, I felt like a kid again, dude. Like the intro is it's, so freaking cool. It's beautiful too, isn't yeah, it? This it new is. version, I know, it, I have it, really it as well. Is. <laughs> and you know, the intro of the game, you know, really just sets the, the whole tone for it. You know, not too much story, but you can see what's happening, and you just, yep. I, it's amazing. No, the, it's true that. You hit upon something here that these games have kind of a mystique to them almost or like a like i remember playing the original i don't even think it had like english voice it was like a oh, yeah, their own language, language. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah it was like that it was really cool so yeah i know when i first heard that they were kind of doing a remaster remake of this i was like that is amazing because i love these well games. i don't think they initially wanted to they had lost the source code they would they would have oh, actually just remastered it well, that's probably true i made a remake well yeah remastered version hd version of it but uh, since they lost the source code they they had to build it from the ground up and i'm glad they did because yeah. it's possible that they're working on the second game and they'll possibly do the third game which was like an rpg so yeah if they could do panzer dragon saga that'd be amazing because i know that's i mean that that's on my bucket list for a game yeah get, that game's like know. a thousand bucks man. oh yeah yeah Ooh. yeah i know <laughs> but but i've heard though that it's like one of the most unique fun jrpgs ever made yeah. and people love it so mm -hmm. So you have a Saturn. So do you have a copy of that game? I do not. But, um, <laughs> it's on the list. <laughs> on the list, yeah. I find one for cheap. If you find it like in a thrift store for five dollars, right? Somehow. <laughs> man, I feel like those days are over, man. But it's still, oh, it's still, 
there's still hope out there sometimes, you know. So. Yeah. All right, next up is a game I think you also have a copy of. Is that correct? Oh, man. How do you pronounce the game? Androdonus? I, 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 I don't know either. So, and, Andro, Androdonus 2 yeah. on the 3DS. So the reason why I bought this game was because, one, it's a shooter. Mm -hmm. It's on the 3DS, and it's actual 3D. Yes. And quite possibly, I don't know if this is true, but this might be one of the, the last. last physical 3DS I, games. I, I, I believe it is, man. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that is just crazy. So this is put out by Pixel Heart. And again, when this when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be, you know, this is right mm -hmm. in my alley. This is everything I love. Yep. And it's so cool to, have to play these kind of games in 3D on the 3DS. I was playing it just the other day. And you know something happens with that. I don't know if you play it that way on yours, but the bullets and everything, because there's a separation between the ships and the background, mm -hmm. it kind of makes it not easy but easier. I think. Okay. It, it's because you know in, in a typical bullet shooter, it, it there's a lot going on. Right. And so in a typical game, you can kind of like get well, lost in all the chaos. Well, true. But did the other than that, did the game kind of pull you in though? Like, did it make you want to keep playing it? Oh yeah, yeah, okay, for sure. Because I felt like I was doing really well in it, right? And so I was making a lot of progress. So I was, I was loving this. Okay, yeah. good. And the music was good on it. You know, when the game pulls me in like that, because I got all the way to the fourth level before I put it down. So mm -hmm. I, did, I only expected to play like one level. So yeah. Uh, do you play it with a 3D on, or do you typically play it with it off? I don't have the 3DS version. Oh, so, um, you don't. Yeah, okay. they, it was on. It's on PS4 and Switch. Oh, so, okay. Do you I, still have a 3DS? I do. Oh, I do. okay. I do. Yeah, I'll to, um, actually, while you're here, I'll, I'll, I'll let you play it. Yeah, let me you check it out. You check it sure. out for sure. Definitely. Yeah. But again, it's just one of those things where the last one potentially made, released mm -hmm. on it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Yeah, you know? yeah. I love the 3DS anyway, so happy right to get that. Cool, cool. Uh, ne next here is something you're very familiar with. Oh, yeah. Dude, do you have every version of this game now? Uh, no, <laughs> not every version. This is my second version, but this is Blazing oh, okay. Chrome. And Blazing Chrome came from Pixel Love. Uh, this is their version of it. And okay. I, I never had it on the Switch. I had it on PS4. Oh, okay. And um, you got everybody pretty much knows this is like a run and gun shooter oh, game. Dude, this really a so lot good. of fun. You can choose your uh, your path on it. I have not seen this version before. Yeah, yeah. This one just came out from huh. Pixel Love. But yeah, man, go ahead and open it up. It's, it's a lot of cool stuff in there, man. Um, comes with this little art book, comes oh, with a yeah. soundtrack. That's cool. Again, you know, this generation, these indie titles, man, it's like these kind of special releases mm -hmm. and collector's edition it's so cool yeah yeah definitely this is a game that's worthy of it too because it's so much fun. definitely one of those games is worthy of a physical release and, yeah you know, it's still being celebrated today because huh so it's fixing love put one version out of it so very cool um have you played it recently not recently, but when it came out, we played a lot. You yeah. and I even, I think, we might have did a... a, we did a our, that was my first time playing it, yeah. and we played it. I think we may have got past the first level. Oh, the yeah. First time. I, I, I believe we did. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've beaten it, though, because I suck at these kind of games, but they're fun. Play on easy. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Damn, that's awesome. All right, next up is something completely different to that. Uh, this is Postal. Oh, Wave uh, Studios. Nice. On the Dreamcast. Yeah, Wave Studios. So... Dude, uh, Postal has quite a bit of history to it. This game was super controversial when it first came out on the Why PC back in the day. Because it was glorifying going postal. So, because at the time, I don't know if you remember, but back in like the mid 90s or something like that, you know, you had postal workers and the news that mm -hmm. were kind of, that's where that term comes from, is that postal workers were kind of fed up with, I guess, their working conditions and mm -hmm. they would go postal, right? Well, this is a game that kind of, um, Back, in, you have to remember the time period. Is that right. you know er, these type of games that were ultra violent were just very, uh, you, you know, it, it trigger a lot of people. Yeah. Nowadays you look at it, it's so cartoony. It's like, why does what was the big deal? But back then it was certainly you know. Mm -hmm. But anyways, this is a Dreamcast version, so it originally came out on PC. Supposedly, I don't know how true this is, but supposedly. The original de developers made the source, source code available, like freely available, mm -hmm. if someone would do a Dreamcast version. That was their stipulation wow. for releasing it. Here's that Dreamcast version that they wanted. Uh, and anybody can buy it. And it runs really well on the Dreamcast. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's basically an isometric shooter. And this guy goes completely bananas. He's kind of lost his mind and he's just gunning everybody down. Oh, postal. <laughs> he goes postal. So. 
Yeah. It, it's 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 nice that you know still getting Dreamcast games. Yeah, yeah. And and, today, and I do like that this is different than most other Dreamcast games. Like you know, this is a, a old school PC isometric game, and so mm -hmm. it, it's very different than probably every other Dreamcast game out there. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Right. So yeah. Okay. Uh, first fighting game. This is a DNF duel. Hmm. Who's next? It's, uh, a verse fighting game. Uh, this is made by Arc Systems, and pretty much it's based off of a dungeon crawler game that I'm not really too familiar with, but um, I love hmm. Arc Systems' art style that they're using for their games. Like, um, remember when we used to play the Guilty Gear Revelator games? Oh, yeah. The same type oh, of art. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's beautiful. This game is freaking awesome, and you know, it has its own story mode, then there's an arcade mode, uh, and the, the characters' names in the game are like named by off their fighting style. Like, there's a guy called Grappler. You know, obviously he grapples people. That's how his main thing. There's a striker, all hmm. kind of stuff. And I was pretty impressed with this game. It's it's not one of those fighting games that holds your hand. It has like an auto combo system on it. You know, it actually makes you learn the combos in this game so you can get better at it. Which I really, I, I could really appreciate that because mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of fighting games they they try to make them more appealing to people who might want to get into them. So and even playing for so long, you're just like, yeah, yeah that's cool. Huh. Yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a really cool game that might go into people's radar because I don't know how well they promoted it, but man, once you see this game you're going to want to try it out it's it's pretty awesome okay you know somebody in the comments on one of our previous videos was like you we need to do an episode where you sit me down and you pick like one or two or the top three fighting games and you just basically you 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 play you know obi-wan i'll be the padawan and you teach me how to play <laughs> <laughs> like a, a fighting games i think that'd be pretty fun maybe so. one day yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right next up for me is a ps3 game fracture Oh. Do you remember this game? Vaguely. Yeah. yeah. I've been kind of in the mood to, to play and collect some PlayStation 3 games, and I realized I used to have a copy of this, and for whatever reason, I got rid of it. So Fracture is a is a third-person shooter. Its whole gimmick is, is that you have this ability to manipulate the environment, specifically the ground. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you can you can fire at the ground and raise it up if you need to get above something or onto another ledge, or you can shrink it down to go underneath buildings or, oh, okay. or infrastructure. So the level design is unlike any other game I've ever played because it really does sort of allow you to manipulate the environment and you need to. Like for instance, if you're in a firefight, you might want to raise up the ground in front of you to be a shield that you can hide behind and fire. Okay. So it's a pretty trippy game. It's it's you know sci-fi. I I wonder if it's still online. You know, you know it's funny about a lot of these mm. PS3 games, but sometimes they're still online. Oh, really? Like, well, yeah, yeah, people are <laughs> on their plan still. I love that. Yeah, it, I have no idea because this is definitely one of those games. I think it came out. Maybe didn't find its audience, you know, but uh, nowadays you can find it. I think I paid six dollars for it yeah. or something, you know. What I mean, so, but it's it's definitely it, it's a, one of those games that kind of lives and dies in the system. It okay. does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't even know if there's a PC version that people can get anymore. Okay. I have no idea, but you know, it's one of those games where is it a AAA title? No, but if you're looking for something kind of new and different, yeah, check it out. You know, okay. I'll be interested to know if people still play it or you know remember it back in the yeah. Let us know if it's still online yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna try it out. That'd be hilarious, actually. <laughs> right on. All right, so next up here, this actually I actually got these right before I came down. Um, oh, this okay. Is, uh, Pixel frames. Oh, um, you've been you've been getting these. That's cool. Yeah. So this one is jazzing up your game room. Yeah, yeah, man. That one's one of my favorite fighting games of all time. Third Strike, Street Fighter Three, Fight for the nice. Future. Yes, I said the whole title. And also, Street, wait, Street Fighter Three Third Strike moment number is that part of the? the no, no, no okay. that's just yeah, that's just that's, just, that's it's called the Evo moment, like a, oh, at a tournament. Okay, uh, okay. The, the guy pulled off something really impressive, which is the, what the art is based off. I got you. And, okay, um, people never forgot. Because was, was awesome. that would be part of a title of, of you know. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It would be. They got some weird like yeah. like subtitle names, but yeah, Street Fighter Three. Hmm. Um, really loved this game, and that was one of, uh, pretty much an iconic moment. In it so uh, Pixel Frame made art of it. Hmm. Uh, very impressive, and then of course this one is Battle Toads. This this is the epic uh, Turbo Tunnel that everybody hates. Yeah, I should say infamous uh, level. I thought the jet level was always harder than the Turbo Tunnels, but you know uh, people probably never got past the Turbo Tunnels, so they consider that the hardest. Uh, Battle Toads is one of those games. One, cool. one of the I think it's one of the hardest games of all time. Yeah, I hear that a lot. I has a lot of crazy moments, and here is Battle Toads the arcade game, which is my favorite Battle Toads arc oh, game. Okay. Wow, look at all the detail in there. That's cool. Yeah, man. Huh. 
Jazzing up your game room, dude. Pretty much, man. Pixel That's Frames, cool. they, they have a lot of cool art coming out. Yeah. So uh, this is their latest stuff. So grab that from them. Huh. And officially licensed. That's cool. All right. Next up for me, something completely different than that. Uh, just blind buy PlayStation 5 game that I saw out there called Street Outlaws 2. Winner <laughs> takes all. It looks like a complete budget title. And in many ways, it kind of is. But basically what it is, it's a drag racing simulator. I didn't okay. know this when I bought it. It just looked like it was a racing game. But actually, it's pretty fun. So it's drag racing. And what you have to do in the beginning is warm up your tires. So you, you spin your wheels okay. to kind of warm up the, the tires so that they have more traction. You inch up to the starting line. It counts down. You manually shift. And every race is determined by a you know fraction of a second. So it's actually pretty fun. Like, if you were into drag racing, it's actually kind of cool. Do, is it the best looking game? No. There's no reason it needs to be on the PS5. But. Well, the, the one thing of Turpy Wall is the way the cover looks. Because you see how everybody's trying to look mean on it and everything. It's like, well, the, girl, for, the girl looks nice. She's yeah, fine yeah. the way she is. But everybody everyone, else is trying to look. The everyone Cowboy has guy, two. He's, he's okay, too. Yeah. But the other, two, the other three guys, it's like, I don't know. The man. only thing I can think of, and it, <laughs> forgive me for not knowing, but it says Discovery. So I assume maybe this is like a Discovery Channel show. It's probably, yeah, it's probably on Discovery. I have no idea. General Mills uh, Entertainment published it. They're the same people who did G.I. Yeah. Joe the game. So, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But, like I said, it, it's actually a pretty decent drag racing game. My buddy Paul is into drag racing. So okay. next time he comes over, I'm going to pop this in and see what he thinks. Because okay. he's a little bit of a snob when it comes to Like, he watches it every week. Really? Oh, dude, he knows everything about drag racing. So I'll be kind of curious to see what he thinks about this. But I was having fun with it, and I was winning races barely. So, <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. And yeah. You guys, let us know what you guys think of the cover too. Let know in the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, next up here, another shoot 'em up. Hmm. Uh, this is Death Smiles. Oh, dude. Yes. Um, one and two. Okay. So cool. this actually was released in America. I think it's on Amazon exclusive in America. I picked it up. And it comes with the first two games. Uh, the second game uh, we only got here as a digital on Xbox Live. Now we have it in English yep. as a physical, so pretty cool. And Death Smiles games, those are the games that kind of got me back into shoot 'em up. Yeah, I, I thought agree they too. were really well done. I had no idea a shoot 'em up could be that well done. You know, like the boss battles, the music, it's just, it's, it's, it's got this real goth feel to it, goth look to it, of course. But it's also very whimsical. Like, I think one of the first bosses you fight is a cow. Like, yeah, the cow <laughs> boss. Yeah, the crazy, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a giant cow for mm -hmm. some reason, you know. I'm sure there's probably explanation in the story, but the thing for me about the Death Smiles game, and you're right, it, it kind of, it, it can be a gateway for people to get back in, or get into yeah. shooters, because honestly, it's not that hard either. Like, mm -hmm. if you play it on the easier mode, it's a game you can give anybody, and they'll just right. it'll have a smile on their face. It's so yeah. much fun. Yeah, and it's got a great soundtrack too. You know, go, to yeah, go with it, it is, and, and you know, it's got story to it. You know, would, but the story goes really quick. Like yeah. it flashes on the screen, and it's just there for kind of like flavor. Yep. You know, almost. And, and it has the multiple endings too, so you can choose your ending at the end of the game, which is always nice to have a little choice. Yeah, you and know? and stuff blows up everywhere in these games. Like yeah. it's crazy, but it's also really fun. Huh? Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah definitely, man. <laughs> Stuff I need to put on my uh, my want list there. So next up, Retrobit keep releasing these oh, wow. really cool games, and this is definitely one of them. I, I, is, is always yeah, always, always awakening, always awakening, which I guess was like a um, it was like yeah. a it was like a really popular indie game a couple years ago, right? Yeah, it, it, yeah, and the game plays it's an adventure game, kind of like a. I don't want to say a Metroidvania, but you know it's kind of very similar between that something like Castlevania: Simon's Quest, or yeah, maybe yeah. even Zelda Two in a way, but doesn't play like those. But you know it has that little like that open area, I would say, where you kind of like take your adventure. And so I was reading up on this, and basically that original version that came out like on Steam or whatever was so large that mm -hmm. there was no way that they could do an NES cart. It was mm -hmm. like 280 megabytes or something like wow. that. Wow. And so this right here is kind of a reworked version of that. Uh, to get it to fit and play on a real NES. So yeah. the footage you guys are seeing is me running it on a real NES. Yeah. And it looks and plays amazing. I was like really blown away. And this version is good to get because it has a secret. I can't reveal it, you know, but um, they, they told me not to tell anybody, but um, people who get the happy version, oh, yeah, yeah, it has a pretty cool secret that... Really? Yeah, oh, Maybe somebody in the comments will probably spoil it, but okay. it's, it's worth getting this version, folks. Definitely something you want to well, have if you're an NES collector. Retrobit... 
they, they do this with all these where they just go all out. Like yeah. this one has like a little banner here. It's also got the uh, you ha you have the uh, certificate of authenticity. It has the lenticular I love that. little poster yeah. right here. I mean, you know, again, and the special NES cart. It's awesome. So. Yeah, man. I mean, it even it's got a little stamp in there too for the, the art, pretty much. So. Oh yeah, you're right. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's on point. Oh, and a battery for save, too. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, so I was happy to get this. You know, they're, put, they're putting it out for us. I yeah. like that. Okay. Um, whew, man. We're, we're, we're cooking along. We are. All right, so uh, taking a break from the shooters, I got the oh, Fanoa. I forgot this came out. Yeah, the Reverie Collection. I, I, I'm going to buy this. Man, I put this in, dude, and I, I beat the first one immediately, one playthrough. I was Did like, you? It, pull, it pulls you back in. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, I love these. I, every, once, every couple of years, I'll go back and replay it on some system, whether... I mean, well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, they... It was a it was shocked that they were they, they brought these out pretty yeah. much and what they do usually is that if they take interest in possibly making a sequel they want to see if the game has interest out there mm. and by doing it they'll they'll put out previous games and I think this is selling well so hopefully we'll get a Klonoa three but um they really put some good effort in putting this together you know some people just slap like older games together and don't really yeah. like, a coat of paint on them or nothing like that but this one they actually like redid the graphics for the first Klonoa game and Klonoa in the first game he he more looks like he, how he did in the PS one version where he looks like a cat. Uh, they had a Wii version of the game where Klonoa looks like more like a teenager. Yeah, that's the version like they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the second game um, is my favorite game in the series. But uh, this game was known for like um, obviously being obscure, but the endings really like were were something else, man. The endings were like, I, I guess I could say like a tearjerker. I don't think I've ever played the second one. What system was that on? PS2. It was the PS2. Yeah, it was oh. early. It was a yeah. I don't have a copy of that. I would say a second generation PS2 game. Okay. When it came out, yeah. I don't think it was really well known because uh, like platformers weren't really popular back when the PS2, at least from what I remember. Especially the, the kind of two two point five D style. Yeah, nobody was like playing that stuff. Like I mean, I mean stuff like GTA came out and like people like just kind well, of. Well, it was Ratchet and Clank. It was that. Ratchet and Clank. It, it, but, but those, those were was full three D, right? Right, right. Yeah. Where this is definitely. I mean, it's, yeah. Side scrolling, yeah, two point five D. But whatever. but the thing is though, I think as time has gone on. A lot of people like us are very nostalgic for these games yeah. because there's nothing quite like them. You exactly. Know I mean? Exactly. I hope, huh. Hopefully, we'll get a Klonoa, Klonoa three. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments when we get Klonoa three. I'm hoping so. Yeah. Where did you get this? Because this is not a, a US I got release. those. Where did I get those? I, I'm trying to remember. Um, was it was it through Amazon or did you just walk into? No, it, it was actually eBay. Was it? Yeah, somebody in eBay had it in America, and I, hmm. and I bought that, picked it up. So. All right, I'm going to do that, because I completely forgot about that. I'm glad yeah. you re reminded me. <laughs> All right, uh, next up is something pretty cool here. So ah. I've mentioned in the past that there is a Facebook group that I'm part of that you should be a part of if you like physical Switch games. And basically on there, we've talked about them in the past, that they, they're they hardcore. Like, you and I... were. Yeah. We're we're, we're kind of casual, I think, compared, yeah, compared to them. Yeah, <laughs> man, they're all, they're on it. It's really a, really a fun uh, page to go to. It's so yeah. entertaining. Everybody's informative. Yeah, very nice and polite. There's a lot of information to be had on there. So it really is. And so through there, uh, I was able to get a copy of Breath of the Wild, the Japanese version. The reason why this is so important is because it is mm -hmm. the only version that has all the DLC on it. And I'm assuming it's in English. And it's in English. Wow. Yes. Okay. Dude. So, <laughs> so I would not have heard about this had it not been that Facebook group. So, and, and among many, many other things, but this is uh, this is one of those things where you're like, if you care about a game and you really want the best physical version right. of it, you know, the, you'll hear about it on there. So, right on, dude. That, I know. That was cool, dude. Yeah. Did you ever beat this game? No. <laughs> I was enjoying it, man, but the, the weapon breaking on it, yes. like, it kind of got on my nerves. Yes, yes. But, uh, but here's the thing, though, is that while, because I played it when it first came out, and I got, I put many, many hours into it, but kind of like you, I also got tired of sliding down with the rain and stuff like mm. that. However, since then, some of the DLC has really enticed me to come back to it, because I, I, I know it's like a motorcycle or something like that. Really? And, okay. Yeah, yeah. there's all this extra stuff, and so I was like, well, if I'm going to go back and play it, then I'm going to want the physical version of it, and so that's, okay. that's it right there. Good call on this one ran right on yeah. okay um next up here is another shoot 'em up this is cotton fantasy uh also known as cotton rock and roll i like that name better than they they renamed it fantasy hmm. but this is the latest cotton game and these are shoot 'em ups and i'm, I'm so happy the cotton games are getting released again because of these i played this i played the first one back i think when i was like 13 hmm. and i really enjoyed it 
And um, I didn't think I was even, was even gonna like this one. I thought it was a remake of the first game, but when I played it, man, I was blown away. You know, it, it's it's rare that I I want to do a review on the game. I went ahead and did a review on this one. And did you? Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun playing through it. You know, you can choose different paths on the levels you go to. Um, it's just different covers depending on the PS4 and the Switch. Yeah, so the the, the Switch actually has a reversible cover, oh, okay. and the oh. PS4 version does not. It has uh, art. Well, let me oh, see it is. Again. It is reversible. Oh, but, okay. But there's something on this side I remember that wasn't. Yeah. You see oh, that? The, the castle. So, okay. reversible art, but not. You you wouldn't want to flip this on the other side. I got that you. Instruction on it. I got it's you. Annoying. But yeah, the Switch mm. version mainly has a reversible art. And that's why I put it on there. And they, they tried to put an instruction card in there, which is nice. Nice, you know, yeah. Not an instruction book, but they put a card in there. They put something in that groove. And yeah. if you, I'm telling you guys right now, this is a game you'll want to pick up. It was a lot of fun. It's, it has so much going for it. Um, very nostalgic for people who played the Cotton games previously. And that, I think this game will actually bring uh, new Cotton fans uh, to the series. So um, hmm. definitely something you guys want to pick up. Okay. I want to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up. Uh, so... <laughs> Super Liminal. Have you heard of this game? No, I haven't. Super Rare. Okay, let's see. What super Rare, Super Liminal. So I popped this in, basically, I was just kind of like, okay, blind buy here, I'll see see what this game is like. Dude, this game is a trip. So have, have you look. played Portal? Or have you played, um, you, you know how yeah, I play Portal? Yeah, Portal, like first person puzzle game, mm -hmm. you know? Or the Stanley Parable, um, where it's kind of like you're, you're stuck in like this this maze so what this game is it's basically very much like portal where you are in these rooms it's almost like an office building or something like mm -hmm. that however what makes this game very weird and unique and awesome is that it deals with perspective so for instance i'll show it on the screen here but like let's say you are trying to get at something that's in the other room mm -hmm. and you're being blocked by walking in there and you put your hand out well if, if your hand is close in perspective to the thing that's far away mm -hmm. it'll let you grab it because you've moved into a way that the perspective is like your your hand is next to it in a 2D plane. It's weird. Okay. Or or like let's say that you you need to pick up an object that needs to cover a bunch of buttons on the like there's three buttons on the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're in this massive room. And you pick up something like a pencil or I forget what it is in this game but basically like like let's say you pick up a switch cup and you pick it up like this which makes it feel really big. Mm -hmm. You let go of it, it's big. It's suddenly oh. massive. Okay. This game messes with your mind. It's hilarious. So, yeah, I was very impressed with this. Why? Wow, I, I, wow, dude. The way I'm describe, describing it, because you haven't played it, you'll right. be like, what the heck is he talking about? But when you see the footage, you'll get it. Well, they're tricking you, too, because on the back here, they show no, like, gameplay. I know. I was like, man, where's the gameplay? I know. All, the, all I'd heard is that you got to try it, go in blind, uh, and it'll mess with you. Kind of like, again, like Portal. Like, you don't want to know too much about it, because part of it's just the fun of Discovery. Okay. Yeah, so th this game impressed me quite a bit. I was I was kind of blown away by it. It was messing with my mind. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, all right, so next game here, I actually got this uh, right before we came here, too. Hmm. Um, this is POA. Uh, this is from uh, Fre First Press Games. Huh. And um, this, I believe it's a Game Boy uh, color game. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely a Game Boy color game. And uh, the game kind of reminded me of Trip World for the Game Boy, if anybody's ever played that game. It's a platform game where you, you kind of like, um, you, the, way, the way you attack people, you kind of like blow a, a bubble that's attached to you, and then that you, that's how they like you beat enemies. But um, it's a platform game that pretty much, I, I don't want to say it test, at least the first level didn't test my skills because I only played the first level so far. Mm -hmm. But um, you got to make sure you make some precise jumps uh, pretty much on certain parts of the game, you know, because you'll fall to your death and, you know, it's one hit kills so far that I'm seeing in the game. But it's actually pretty cool that we're still getting Game Boy games out there, you know. Um, yeah. I, I was, I'm pretty impressed with this one. Definitely huh. something that I think people want to add on their list, and play, especially if you're like a Game Boy enthusiast. Oh, like sure, said, sure. Uh, and so that came in the mail just right before we... Right, yeah. Oh, That's but, why like, I'm, like my information on it is minimal, but uh, I played yeah. <laughs> enough of it. I think I kept it you know, interesting for you folks, but okay. uh, definitely something people might want to check out. Okay. Like, wait, 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 wait. It's, you can play on the Game Boy Advance, too, so it is a Game Boy Advance game. It's just in a Game Boy Color cart. Oh, ah, oh, well, that makes sense, of course. Yeah. At least I hope so. I hope I'm right about this. Sorry, <laughs> the information's jacked up. <laughs> All right, next up is another game that really surprised me. It is called Arch Veil. Vale. Uh, this is a, on the Switch. I heard about this one. My buddy had told me about <sighs> it. Another game I played for hours and hours when I first got it. So this is a twin-stick shooter. They call it a bullet hell. 
It is and it isn't. I mean, bullet hell to me means that the screen is filled with bullets and you mm -hmm. really have to dodge. This is really more of a twin stick shooter. What's cool about it though, is that it's also a full blown RPG on top of that. Okay. And so you're, you're definitely going into every screen. You're, you need to shoot everything that is there, and then that opens up the next screen. And but you're adventuring, so you're going through. You're you're basically trying to find things. You're crafting. Yeah. You're doing all this stuff, dude. This is super addictive game. Man, it's multiplayer too. Yeah, cool. I, yeah, it's it's pretty fun. I like how the person on the back is like playing the Switch. Yeah, <laughs> but you know it's exclusive properly. So. Yeah, so I, I I really like twin stick shooters, and this was one of those things where. I didn't get tired of it very quickly because of the RPG elements. I really okay. wanted to go to the next screen, to the next screen, to the next screen. So, yeah, super fun game, man. I, I, I dig it a lot. I know. Yeah. Oh, let me put it right here. Okay, um, next game here. This is another one that came okay. right at the end. Uh, this is, hope I pronounce this right, Nasuke Chronicles. That's a really nice little case there. Yeah, yeah. So hmm. this is another... Uh, Released by First Press Games. Okay, wow, and, um, that's really nice. That's cool. I believe this is the the sequel to Giga, like Giga Force. The oh, okay, Giga, Giga Force, the one I was playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the sequel to that game. Oh, I well, believe I'm right. Okay, but um, hmm. this game is really cool, and um, I tried to play it on normal first, and I got <laughs> I got tore up. So I played on easy, and that did really well. So I just gotta kind of get familiar with the game yeah. first. But the releases that they put out, man, are really like hardcore, man. I'm really impressed with heavy. the stuff. Yeah, I know. Or something like that. Yeah, they hook it up, man. Oh yeah, that's a big old manual. Oh, that's cool. Full color and looks like it even got like a story and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this game was, I believe, it was released on the 360 years ago. Okay. Uh, but it was in Japanese, and now we have it in English, which is nice. So it's a it's a shoot 'em up game with story. So you know, it has that in it, but. Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna have fun with this one, but I'm gonna play on easy first to get used to things. And then as yeah. I get better, I'll play on normal. There's no shame in that. There's yeah. no shame in that. You know, because yeah, if sometimes it's just learning the patterns or you know the the, the, the specific you know special weapons and right. stuff. So no shame. Thank you, man. I feel <laughs> a lot better because I was like, man, I was getting yeah. tore up. <laughs> all right. Next up, I have four four things here uh, oh, right. because they all came within the same day. Okay. These are all the as of today, I guess the the new EverQuest or EverQuest Evercade. 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 <laughs> <laughs> cartridges for the Evercade handheld and versus. Okay. They keep putting these things out. I mean, God, it's amazing how yeah. in this day and age, when it seems like every retro thing that you want to collect is expensive, mm -hmm. these are not. Like they're twenty dollars a piece. Like it's amazing. Yeah, these games are. I mean, they're meant for like to be a home console. They're not really like. Um, I don't know if they're like be worth anything where people could trade them to other people or anything like that. I, I probably but, not, but that, that's not the point. I think it's the point is that you know people who just like physical. They right. they all come with a manual. Mm -hmm. They're all fully licensed, and also too, what's cool about it is you see here, it's not the typical thing you see. Yeah, right. It's just not stuff you've seen a million times before. Exactly, and I love that they're arcade games that like are being released as physical. You know, I know these games would not get released, man. Like Rod story like that's uh, and, well, and actually I, it did but and honestly the physical or the the arcade cartridges are, are starting to become some of my favorites yeah yeah just because i i end up discovering so many games in there and also they're they're often the better versions right mm -hmm. so yeah the uh um you got rylan story 64th street which is a beat -em up which is hilarious um Oh, uh, Avenging Spirit. They do. They, and, yeah, and that's an awesome game, by the way, where you you, yeah. you uh, possess different characters, you get their abilities. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Earth Defense Force, right on. Yeah. Man. You, okay, they're really putting it out on it. Yeah, and it, it's a nice mix. So they they basically have Jellico, is that how you pronounce that? Mm -hmm. uh, the Morph Cat, these are these are newer indie games, right. in, indie, indie titles here. Uh, super fun in here as well. Uh, Intellivision Collection 2, so the, this is the second collection of Intellivision games, which is pretty wild. Uh, Galico, is that how you pronounce that? Yep. Um, arcade Agalico collection here. something. Yeah, Galico. Yeah. <laughs> and then they've also announced that they're going to be coming out with an, a Commodore 64 collection. Really? Which I am all over. So, <laughs> so it's crazy because they cover... They cover consoles, arcades, home computers. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a very cool system that they have. Okay. Yeah. Right on. All right. So, um, wow, down to my last item, I believe. This is another Saturn game. And I, I totally forgot how to pronounce this game, unfortunately. But I remember the English title for it. Well, right there. Just try to pronounce that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Perukura <laughs> Peruka, Peruka Desdenskaysen? Sure. 
I, I did that on purpose because I knew that. It <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're going to call it Princess Clara. I think that was the English title for it. Oh, okay. Me. And this is an isometric <laughs> shooter uh, that's really. Um, isometric? I, yeah, it's like a. Um, Isometric like, like shooter, Zaxxon? like um, huh? Like Zaxxon. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could say it's like that, but you're okay. walking around actually and shooting item, and shooting oh, people okay. and stuff. Hmm. Um, it, it's a, it's co-op. It, it, it's sprite based, which is really nice. So you know, not it many games good. are sprite based anymore, but it's a it's a product of its time. It was released in arcades, and of course, on the Saturn, as you can see. And I I wanted to pick this one up because it was, was one I wanted to pick up for a long time. Hmm. If you guys have played that game on the Switch and PS4 called Remy Lore. Remy Lore um, kind of reminded me of it, so uh, oh, as I started yeah, okay. rebuilding the Saturn, I said, you know what, I gotta get this one, and um, it's back, it, well, not back in the collection, I got it in the collection, so uh, definitely a game, you know, it's by Atlas, too, so a lot of people like Atlas. Where, where are you getting these at? Are you getting local? I got that or? one on Macari. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. I haven't used that before. Macari, Macari's pretty cool. Is it? Yeah, hmm. I like it. Okay. But, oh, um, wow, that's cool. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. Definitely happy to have that one okay. in the collection. So I got contacted by a company called Grid Studio, and they basically saw my game room, uh -huh. and they're like, hey, you are going for a complete PSP collection. And yeah. so they basically were like, we got to we gotta send this to you. Have you seen these before? I think I have, but I don't yeah. so really you, remember. You'll, you guys will see a, a close-up here. So basically what they do is they take decommissioned consoles, controllers. They got their start actually doing it with iPhones mm -hmm. and they would take them apart and make big make art out of them and be, you know the, they're highlighting kind of what they are or what they do. And so they're kind of meant to be sort of collectible to be hung on the walls and uh it was very cool that they sent this to me. Cool dude. Wow. Yeah, so that's the PSP. Uh they know I'm a PSP collector. They wanted this to be in my game room. So um and it's funny because when they when they sent this I was like, "Well, you know, my buddy Reggie has a game room. Mm. You should, uh, maybe it'd be kind of cool if he got one of these. So, <laughs> dude, do you remember a couple months ago when I asked you what your favorite handheld was? Yeah. Yeah. And you, oh, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Yes, yes. The, the Game Boy Advance. Yes. Now, I, I, I did tell them, though, that Pokemon's not your favorite game on the Game Boy Advance, but what's cool about it is that you can open up the back here and you can replace that with any other game that you want. That's awesome, dude. I'll leave it like it is, man. Yeah. It just, uh, wow. It's beautiful, isn't it? A signature of yeah. your, your favorite portable system, and this is so awesome. So that, that's the gift that I hooked up for you because I knew that that would be awesome in your game room. I so, appreciate you, brother. Yeah, and uh, actually what's really cool is that they are going to hook everybody up um, with a discount code. So I didn't know that they are going to do this, but basically if you go to their website, I'll put a link down in the video description below, and uh, if you want to save 15% and mm -hmm. you want to get one of these for your game room, like I said, they have... They have iPhones, they have controllers, they mm -hmm. have uh, retro handhelds, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you'll be able to get 15% off. So I thought that was pretty cool of them. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's awesome, man. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Yeah. My favorite system, well, portable system yeah. of all time, yeah. Game Boy Advance, yeah. hands down. Well, when I asked you, I was like, is it the Game Boy Color? Because I know you it's collect... Between, it's, it's between, it was between the Game Boy Advance and the PSP, to be honest. Okay. And, um, you know, it's like... It's it's a really tough call, but when I showed you my Game Boy Advance collection, which you, you were the first person to actually see it all, and uh, you know you, that, you could tell that was pretty much my favorite out of both of them. Yeah, because I think you have more Game Boy Advance games, don't you? Oh, yeah. Especially in the box, because that's mm -hmm. the thing you've been collecting is the, all these in the box. So, yep. is that everything for you? You have one more? I, I do have one more. Okay, just, all right, all right, I'll show it. <laughs> this is uh, this one, um, strictly limited. Uh, this is a magical high school girl. This is like a what RPG. Uh, it's like a turn-based RPG, but it's like um, it, it reminds me of kind of like a dungeon crawler because basically it's about a girl who's trying to get home from school, and um, you you run into these monsters while you're trying to get hmm. home, and you go through all these different like uh, like I want to say revamped uh, like dungeon levels, and enemies come at you, but it's like a, they move when you move too. So every time you move, they move. So oh, it's like, okay. What do, you, what do you call it? It's, I guess it's just a turn-based RPG, but it's. Like, I played those games before. Yeah, where where. Everyone moves. Like, is, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's paused until somebody moves, until it, you move. Exactly. Huh. And, and basically in this game, you get like magical spells, but you name the spell. So whatever you name the spell, if the game, recon it, it'll recognize it as an element. So if I said something like hmm. ice, 
uh, it would the the spell you would get is ice when you collect like certain items, or if you see something like a like fire, it'll be fire. You know, it's very simple like that. You know, you you can come up with a bunch of different names and you'll get like different types of like uh, spells to use. How did you on your way home? This? How'd you hear about this game? I've never it heard was of this it was very random. Like uh, strictly limited had uh, had talked about it. That's oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So um. I've never heard of this. this yeah, crazy. yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? Yeah. And, and it came in that collector's edition like that with all that extra stuff. Yeah, so. there's a ton of extra stuff in here, too. Yeah, man, so. Wow. That is officially my last pickup. Okay, well, that, that's that, that's our pickups for this video. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. So, a lot of variety here. Yeah, definitely, man. I yeah. know. That, that, that's what's always fun about these, is that I have no idea what you're going to show. It's funny because I never have what you have either, too. I mean, yeah. I, I think uh, the only one that we share is probably uh, the quarry, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the quarry. Yeah, so I always learn just as much as hopefully you do, too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care.